So what I've noticed over the last couple of days that I've been here in Geneva is that the presence of human rights defenders from Bahrain has diminished. There are not so many defenders who are here, but also there are very few Bahraini regime here. Usually they would send maybe 300 people. There are not so many. The presence is not felt and they're being very silent while they're here. They've become quite sheepish. They uh, don't respond to questions. They aren't quick to um, participate and engage in conversation. Uh, they don't have any answers. And I think it's because they're so embarrassed and humiliated by themselves at their own behavior. How can they stand it anymore? And the big um, question, I think, at this, at this event has been, how much more? How, how much more do you need to see us here? What, g give us something back now. It's time. It's time to make the change. Even the NGOs who are participating in the side events, who are international NGOs, have said that this year, 2014, is the year when they need to keep their promise. They need to show that they're keeping their promises to implement the different um, protocols that they've adhered to. And in June, in the next session, I think we're going to see some significant changes around the next session. Samud, keep going, keep going. I know that it's very hard. I see people here who are exhausted and they keep trying. And just because something looks like it might be hopeless doesn't mean that you must not continue to try just as hard. I think that the wall is starting to crack and it is going to come down. The wall around the island, the prison that the island has become, the cage is rattling. They can hear it and it's starting to come down. The, typically the United Nations is very silent on Saudi Arabia. There's very little conversation here. There's very little presence here. And the United Kingdom and the United States, they're all complicit in the human rights situation inside Saudi Arabia. Even my own government who was visiting recently complimented the Saudi government on their commitment to human rights. Ireland couldn't believe the, the things that the foreign department said at that time. And the uh, frontline defenders contacted the foreign office to say, what are you talking about? We know it's clear that Saudi Arabia has terrible human rights aberrations. Even down to King Abdullah having two of his daughters under house arrest for 12 years. So, and I know these girls personally. But Wahhabism is profound. And I don't think that people understand and they can't see that the uh, correlation is between these human rights aberrations and the sinister element of Wahhabism.